Today I thought it would be fun to customize my old Game Boy Color. We have a proper screwdriver on the way. I was also curious about this rumor that you can use a melted pen to turn proprietary screws by molding it to the screw itself. And I just wanted to know if that worked. Spoiler alert, it didn't. With enough downward pressure, we were able to turn the screws using a tiny flathead. The ones in the battery case were just really tough. Carefully took the guts out of this Game Boy Color and just put it aside so I can now mess with the shell. After covering some delicate spaces I didn't want to get paint on, I'm starting by giving everything a light sanding so that it's easier for paint to grip the surface. There's no turning back at this point. I'm actually going to prime the Game Boy shell with gesso with many light thin layers. And I'm starting with gesso because I think watercolor actually responds decently well to gesso. This doesn't seem like the kind of surface that I would want to use watercolor on. As you can see, it goes on very pale, but I'm still able to build up some layers onto it. So my plan for the Game Boy design is a flowering quince with a ripped book paper kind of look to it because I love this coral red color. I was super nervous doing this because I was afraid of ruining my Game Boy. <laughs> you know, when I bought this Game Boy color, it was $10 and no one was really snapping up old consoles as quickly as they are now, so it wouldn't be as easy to replace it. I also think it's kind of funny that every time I see one of these Game Boy Color customization videos, it's always the same purple Game Boy. I'm wondering if this Game Boy Color is just the most common or if it's just the least liked color of Game Boy out there? Or is it just a coincidence? Like, what's up with that? I actually didn't have a Game Boy when I was a kid, so if you happen to know what all the really good, fun games are, I'd love to know what they are, because I'm just kind of over here playing Dr. Mario and, and, and Tetris, you know? <laughs> My cousin and I were more into sharing uh, Game Gear games, so we're talking like backlit, bright colors, ridiculous battery life. <laughs> Pretty much never played it on batteries. But Game Gear was kind of where it's at. I, I completely missed a lot of Game Boy Color stuff. Putting down the book paper scrap was the trickiest part, trying to get it to lay flat. It also turns a little bit transparent with the glue and with the spray afterward, so it doesn't look as nice and clean because I could see the paint right through it. If I could do that again, I would have painted the back of it with more gesso. And I wasn't sure about this, but I really wanted to include a Minecraft bee. I know that doesn't have anything to do with Nintendo or Game Boys, but it's just a cute little character that I just wanted to add to the front of this. Once you get used to painting with watercolor, I hate painting with acrylic now. It's so thick and hard to move around and layer. So I'm just over here kind of doing my best with this. I finished by spraying all of my pieces with many layers of Krylon crystal glaze. I'm doing really light slices around the edge of the tape. I don't want to accidentally rip a bunch of the glaze off. And then after a little bit of cleanup, it's time to reassemble the Game Boy and hope that I didn't ruin it. It still works! And now I have a fun custom Game Boy that is unique to me. Can you imagine stumbling across this bad boy in a thrift store or something? Thanks for watching me almost break my Game Boy Color and I will see you next week! I also sell original art, sketchbooks, really nice prints, handmade calendars, pet commissions, and even some one-of-a-kind wearable art jewelry. I also have a sketchbook club on Patreon, where we fill our sketchbooks according to a theme, and some tiers even get original sketches mailed to them.